the next step is uh, adding terrain textures to the height map that we've just created. So you're going to select the texture painting tool. Um, we're going to add new textures to this palette. So click add layer. So a new window appears. This is the, uh, the texture selection window. So go down to grassland. So we'll select this gravel texture, click OK, and you'll notice it is added to your texture layer window. So now that I've selected the texture layers that I'm going to use, uh, we'll start applying these textures to the world. Um, some of the options that you have once you have your texture layers picked is you can rearrange the order of these texture layers, which you'll find out is important a little bit later. Uh, you can remove layers. Um, you can add more layers. You can also swap layers out. So what I'm going to do is this, this default sand texture, I'm going to swap out for a rock texture. So I'm just going to do that quickly. Select this uh, coast rock. So that swaps out the entire texture for a new texture. So now we can go in and begin painting textures. So by left clicking, you can just paint this, uh, this gravelly texture down. So on top of this, we're going to select the grass and just paint that right on top. So this grass will be painted uh, in most spots at 100% opacity, but we'll go in and reduce the opacity in certain areas to make it look a little more realistic. So by decreasing the opacity of the grass to say 65%, you can repaint areas and you notice that the, the blade height actually decreases. And if we cross about like the 45% uh, area, you notice the, in addition to the blade height decreasing, you're also losing some of the underlying ground texture. That'll probably be a good start uh, for the level. And from this point, we can start adding objects. So now select the object tool. Uh, you'll notice there's this records that comes up. Uh, usually it's a good idea to define the boundaries of the level first. So we're going to start adding rocks and cliff objects and things of that nature. And you place these objects in the world by left-clicking on the object in the list and then left-clicking in the world. And you notice this, this handle comes up on the object. And I'll zoom in on, on that. If you move the cursor towards the center of this, uh, you get this cross shape. If you left-click on that, that will allow you to move the object around in the world. Uh, if you move it more towards the outside, notice you get this arrow up and down. Uh, if you left-click, you can move the object up and down in the world. And if you continue to move out, you'll see this circular type tool. By left-clicking, that will allow you to rotate the object. Draw a box, a selection box around these by left-clicking. And you can move these objects as a group together. You can move these objects up and down together. Or by holding Control and then pushing C, you can copy that group of objects and place it somewhere else in the world by Control V. Periodically, you might have a floating object uh, that's just floating in space. Uh, one thing you can do is by pushing spacebar, that will return the objects to the origin of the height map. Now that we've added all of our basic rock boundaries to the world, uh, now I'm just going to add some more trees and other objects. So you can move these trees in the same way that you move the rocks. You can copy these if you want and create groups. Now I'll add some camp objects. I'm just going to start placing some of these in a, a camp arrangement. Another thing you can do is add small rock decorations to the level. They generally make nice accents to the edges of levels, to the, uh, the boundary area of a level. We're going to need something to span this, this chasm here that we've created. So if we go down to the structure directory in infrastructure, there's this folder bridges, select bridge tile wood. And when you place that in the world, you know, notice that the height map is kind of funky around it. The reason that is happening is the, the object itself is actually stitching into the height map. And this allows the player to, to walk on the object. So now that we have our basic gameplay areas established, now we can add some water to the level. 
So select your water tool, and then you notice this on the right hand side, a, uh, a water layer list comes up. What we'll have to do is add a new water layer. So click the add button, and new water type zero will come up. If you either double click on this or push edit, uh, these properties will come up. Let's name this water uh, tutorial water. Then if you go down to under transparency, you have max depth. We'll set that to zero as well. That'll enable us to see the water a little bit better. And we can always come back into this and modify the parameters however we want later. So click apply and then OK. And then select your water layer. And this tool works essentially like the plateau tool. So you can either take sample heights with, by holding the shift button and left clicking. Or you can hold control and set the height of the water uh, by moving the mouse. So just by left clicking, you're just going to paint the water down.